So continuing from our previous session about the uh, XSS, so today we're gonna look into what is cross-site request forgery, how, uh, like you know, how do we attack it, uh, what's the defense, and next video I'm gonna teach you how you can bypass the cross-site request forgery defense using the AJAX and some advanced techniques. So make sure you pay full attention uh, in this video on how the cross-site request forgery really works. So just to give you some basic uh, demonstration. So when someone clicks on uh, like you know this uh, request or this URL, you would think that okay it's gonna take me to the google.com search page and it's gonna search for the cybersecurity TV, right? Same way, uh, if that's that's not too malicious, like if somebody asked me to click on this Google link, I would click it because there is not, no harm in that. However, if you see this link where it says bank.com transfer amount this to account number this. So what is this telling me is you're gonna transfer five thousand uh, dollars from uh, your account to this one 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 account number. Now, if you click on this, uh, it may happen that your bank uh, would like you know do this transfer. And I'm, this is just an example. Of course, you might have like you know some confirm button or uh, there are some validation like uh, multi-factor authentication, some unique code you have to put in. But let's just assume that there, there are some transaction on the website, for example, like delete user. So there is a link which says delete user and the username and you click on it, the user is deleted. So similarly, that's what the cross site request forgery uh, works. So when someone sends you this link, uh, maybe uh, let, let's say via Skype or Google chat or email, you click on it and, and something bad happens which you don't realize. So why this even happens? There, the, the, the first and foremost reason is there is para, pre, predictable parameters. So let's say the parameter, if I have an account on Facebook, right, and, and let's say there is a, a URL for create post, and in, and one of the parameters is like, you know, the message, and where I type the message. So I, I as an attacker know exactly what uh, parameter that the website is looking for. So I would just create the URL with the message, whatever I want, I send it to you, you click on it, and it will execute so it will post the message however you did not intend to do that it was the attackers intention uh, and and behalf of the attacker you posted that message on your wall uh, and the and the most important reason for this happening is session id is automatically added by the browser right so when when you are logged into the facebook in your browser let's say chrome and when you click on this link it, it automatically is open opens up in the chrome browser and then Chrome browser will automatically attach your session ID in that request. So it will not ask you, oh, whether you want to authenticate or because you are already logged in. So it's gonna automatically transfer this amount uh, to, uh, or post the message on behalf of the attacker. Now, CSRF is mostly ignored due to lack of understanding because uh, developers do not know how, like why this is important, why this is critical and, and why to avoid. However, it is still, in the OAS top 10 list, I guess at least for past 10 years. So you can assume how many, you can imagine how many websites have uh, actually been vulnerable to cross site request forgery. The attackers will only target the sensitive transactions. So as I said, maybe posting a message behalf of you, maybe uh, like, you know, um, sending a friend request to someone on behalf of you. And we have seen this tremendous time, uh, many people posting that, oh, my account is hacked, so don't do not do this. Uh, don't, don't reply to my message or whatever. So. It is quite common that someone will not, uh, like you know, as, as I showed you the first one, someone is not going to send you like Google link and click on it and because the, the attacker is not gonna gain anything from that. But they might send you a link to your bank accounts or forged links to your like, you know, Facebook, uh, Gmail or something. Uh, scanners are not going to be helpful uh, if you are a security professional and, or even if you are an engineer uh, developer and you want to like you know use some open source scanners or maybe professional scanners to scan this it's not going to be useful even I would admit that burp is not effective on finding the cross site request forgery issues because it pretty much like you know uh, compare the response and see oh there is no token and that's why it's a CSR vulnerable but you actually have to put the context of the application uh, before you can say whether this is uh, vulnerable to not or not. So, but anyway, let, let's just uh, go back to our demo. I'll show you how exactly uh, the CSRF works, how, how you can attack the CSRF, how you can generate the proof of concept using the burp. 
and then in the next video most importantly we will see how you can bypass this csr token using the cross-site scripting which you have seen in the previous video our uh, mutual day application which is uh, like an intentionally vulnerable and let's say there is uh, this is similar to the example that we are talking instead of like your facebook we have this message where you know you can type hey this is my first blog and when you click on save blog entry it's gonna save it to here right now the uh, interesting point here to notice uh, how can uh, as an attacker you can leverage this uh, like you know attack this page and and perform the cross site request forgery so this is how I, I would like to show you that you can perform the CSRF attack uh, first off, make sure uh, you have a uh, bar proxy configured. Uh, if you don't know about the foxy proxy, check it out. It's a really good tool. Uh, actually, add-on uh, for navigating between different proxy. All right, this is our burp, uh, like, you know, uh, professional edition. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to intercept on, let's say, uh, testing CSRF POC. Okay gonna do this of course the request will be captured here now one thing to notice is the CSRF token is empty that means we can uh, we can easily generate this like you know uh, we can easily bypass this CSR like uh, generate the CSRF POC because there is no token so I'm gonna do is uh, go to the engagement tool and it says generate CSRF POC and here as you can see uh, it's a simple POC so uh, it says like it create the action and method the post uh, it hides all the parameters that we want to uh, like you know submit behalf of the victim or the user so first one is the CSR token which is value is empty then next we have the blog entry the message itself which is says testing CSRF this is URL encoded so don't worry if you don't get it uh, then uh, it says like you know uh, which button do you want to click and then that's it so uh, before so there are two ways you can test it out one you can copy the HTML paste it in the uh, like you know not paid and, and save the HTML and send it to someone and they click on it and it works the other thing is you can also test in the browser so if I say test in the browser I can copy and now go here let's say uh, okay before that let me change the message so you can see successful CSRF instead of testing we will say successful CSRF okay uh, test in browser copy uh, close intercept off okay let's go here so now if you see here recent it says testing CSRF POC right now this was the link uh, which was given by Bob. All right, so this is the same page uh, that we uh, saw the code here when we were generating the POC, right? There's nothing different. You can also do it in the HTML and you can open the HTML page. So as soon as I hit the submit request, you can see successful CSRF POC. Now, of course, in the real world scenario, it won't be the same browser. It, it will be different users, but the logic remains the same. Uh, once you send this HTML to someone or link to someone, they click on the submit button. Even sometimes they don't have to even click on submit button. You can automatically click on behalf of the user. So user doesn't notice anything and it will post the message behalf of the user. Now, how, how do generally developer prevent that? So the easiest ways to prevent it is let's toggle the security here. So now you can see uh, the security is one. Actually, you can again toggle the security let's say server side security okay so this is the highest security that you could get now let's intercept again and say second attempt for CSRF save blog entry let's go here you can see now the CSRF token is right here now if you are so for example let's say when you generate the CSRF POC, right, you'll have this and uh, this will say second attempt. Uh, I'm gonna say successful second attempt, uh, second attempt for CSRF, okay? 
now one thing uh, you would notice this time I'm gonna let's copy the HTML because I want to show you something uh, let me open up the leaf pad paste this here and let's just keep it here so just notice this CSRF token right now of course if I turn this intercept off it's gonna say second attempt for CSRF right here right now in the usual application when the user logs in each user will have the different token so uh, here the token that you have got might be different from the token that you are trying to exploit the user for right so the uh, I as a user a might have a different token like might not have the same value as this one so if I send the same value let's say my value is different and, and you're trying to change it and I just put some random numbers here and now if we try to submit this it's not gonna work why because this token does not we we as an attacker do not have user a CSRF token which was given to him when he or she was logged in and that's the main way to prevent the CSRF right so, so let's just try this uh, let me save this file I'm gonna save it on the desktop and say CSRF poc.html save save okay and let's open this up file open file csrf poc right it's gonna say submit request if you see the source code it's the same one that uh, we just saw of course i i intentionally change the token uh, but uh, of course I as an attacker do not have any control if I'm in the real-world scenario I, I don't have any control on what the user's token is so I'm gonna submit this request it will say sorry an error support has been notified not allowed to give out error at the security level and as you can see the second attempt of successful CSRF uh, did not work so maybe if we check out here right this one I don't think so if it got logged or not but yeah I think this is the one yeah this is the one and and you can also see like the okay here we cannot see the error page but yeah you can easily search and, and it, uh, our, our payload did not get executed and if, even if we refresh here yeah successful CSRF POC did not come through and the main reason was because we had this uh, main reason was uh, that we could not guess this token of the user now as an attacker how 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 would you guess it like uh, how do you bypass this there is no phys like there is no literally way to do this like without asking a user to send this token because this token is in the hidden value like the when 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 you saw the request in the burp like for the valid request uh, the token is not in the cookie a cookie is sent automatically by the browser so we don't have to worry about like guessing the cookie value but this value is sent in the request body so we have to guess each and every value correctly before we can proceed our attack so this is where we are stuck the next week is going to be very very interesting because I'm gonna show you how you can leverage Ajax and the process scripting to steal the CSRF token which is random and and you copy the token and, and attach into the CSRF request you generate the POC and then you submit no matter how uh, strong the CSRF token is so it's going to be very interesting so stay tuned for that if you have any questions in the interim uh, feel free to drop it down in the comment section I hope you like it please hit the thumbs up button if you do subscribe to my channel follow us on the Facebook so you get the latest updates and I'll see you guys next week bye